Hello and welcome back to the BE iLab channel. In our previous videos, we learned how to prepare our dataset and train our machine learning model. In this section, we'll dive into the crucial phase of accuracy assessment for our land use and land cover classification models. So, let's get started. Now that our random forest algorithm is trained, the next crucial step is to assess its accuracy on the validation set. Let's take a closer look at the codes. In this snippet, we utilize the trained random forest model RF underscore classifier to predict the land use and land cover classes on our validation set X underscore vel. The accuracy score is then computed and printed, providing an overall measure of the model's performance on the unseen data. Moving on, let's explore more detailed metrics through the classification report. Here, we define the class underscore names variable corresponding to our land use and land cover classes. The classification report is then generated, offering insights into how well the model performs for each class individually. In this section, we will visualize the model's performance using a tool known as a confusion matrix. Firstly, we should understand why a confusion matrix is a crucial tool for evaluating our classification model. A confusion matrix provides a detailed breakdown of how well our model is performing in individual classes. It goes beyond a simple accuracy score and allows us to see our model's errors. Now, we will proceed to the code and visualize the confusion matrix. In this section, we are going to visualize the model performance. The code begins by importing the necessary libraries, confusion underscore matrix from sklearn.metrics, seaborn as sns, and matplotlib.pyplot as plt. Then, the confusion matrix is calculated using the actual y underscore vel and predicted y underscore pred values from the trained random forest model. Next, class names corresponding to the land cover classes in our classification problem are defined. A heat map of the confusion matrix is created using Seaborn with annotations, a color map, RDYLGN, and specified tick labels. Finally, we set the sizes and labels for both the y-axis and x-axis are set to improve readability. Thank you for joining us in this tutorial. If you found this video helpful or have any questions, drop a comment below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell for more content. The code examples can be found on our GitHub page. See you in the next video.